Hello Brockton and welcome to One North Maine, BCA's magazine show where we highlight people, places and events that make our city the city of champions. Coming up on today's episode, African art at Enzo Flats, downtown action strategy meeting also at Enzo Flats, we are art at the Family Center, the 50th anniversary children's concert, the spring concert honoring Bob Ferrante. So sit back, relax, and see what your community, City of Champions, has to offer. Enzo Flats at the corner of Montello and Center Streets is a hot spot for the Brockton art scene. Recently, the Downtown Revitalization Project had a little get together and some key players within the city were talking about some great opportunities in our fair downtown area. It was exciting. I'm excited. Check it out. I want to thank you all for coming out tonight and joining us for this celebration. Uh, I really want to thank all the people who have been involved in the planning process up through now, uh, community members, advocates for um, uh, organizations, local businesses, churches, neighborhood groups. Everybody's had a hand in developing this project. Um, we're at a point where we can now uh, kind of pick our heads up, take a look around and uh, get ready for the next phase as we submit this to City Council at the end of this month and we move forward with uh, the implementation phase. What I see in the room tonight is optimism. I think people are optimistic about the future of downtown Brockton. They see things happening here and I think one of the things they're most optimistic about is the fact that there is a plan. Um, our transformative development initiative at Mass Development really is a new program. It's been going for a little over a year and Brockton is one of ten cities where we are implementing this initiative. And TDI really is a very simple concept, but I think it's pretty powerful and tonight really I think is an example of that. The whole idea of TDI is that if you're going to change a place, you need to have a partnership. And you need to have a partnership between the city, the private sector, the nonprofit sector. You have to have civic engagement of people who live and work in the district. And you have to have a strategic focus on a small area. I'm here with the other two women that serve Councilor Azat, Ward 7, and Councilor Shane Bonds. young and old, men and women from diverse backgrounds. I'd be remiss if I didn't highlight my passion. I'm with the Broughton Library Foundation, and I'm downtown five and six days a week, and Lucia Shannon, who's been part of our Broughton Library system for 40 years, she started when she was six, um, <laughs> was um, is it been instrumental in bringing remarkable programs to this community. You're two blocks away from all this, people, okay? A historic site garage for them, for W.B. Mason's expansion, for additions uh, to this property, Petronelli Way, 19 Main, they all need extra parking, so to centralize it and serve the larger development around there. One of the projects in our zoning uh, 
uh, proposal that we have in front of going before council is a payment in lieu of parking, which if you can't get all your parking on your site, you can air quote buy out of parking. Sure. But it's like a stadium seat license. Uh, you're not really buying a ticket to the game, but you're buying the right to buy the ticket to the game. So you, you pay a little bit, a percentage of what a parking space would cost you, and then monthly your tenant pays into that. Yep. And so we have the capacity then to sell, and it covers the cost of, of building the garage. Oh, what a unique idea. We're off and running. But the way to really accomplish things, we believe, is to start with a place. And that means you're going to have to say no to some other things. There may be good ideas, but they, we can really focus on a place and make something happen. Um, so it's very exciting to see so many people here in the room today. Um, I do want to thank Trinity. Where are the folks from Trinity? Um, you know, for, for building this building and putting this space together. Um, and including, and including a space like this that can really have a lot of functions and add some life to downtown. And other property owners that are downtown, I haven't met you yet, but I, I do hope to meet you. Um, because you're the people who have invested your money in downtown Brockton and we need to attract more people to do the same. And by I want to thank you and Mass Development because really the key for us being able to get this going was the TDI grant last year that allowed us to bring in the consultant to work with us to develop this plan and we're even more excited this year about the TDI fellow that's on the way that we're actually going to have some extra help and resources in implementing and making this action plan an action plan. And if you look, and Rob will be available to talk afterwards, but you know, we've got action steps, including short-term steps. You'll see things happening right now, this year, that's the beginning of the vision of, of downtown. The 2016 spring concert here at the Fine Arts Building at Brockton High School was extra special. Why? It honored the greatness of band director Bob Ferrante. Mr. Ferrante passed in October of 2015 and his colleague and close friend, music director Vinnie Macrina, selected some special songs in his memory. Let's take a look. We lost a great teacher, uh, a funny man, not all the time. Um, a great musician. Uh, I had the pleasure of knowing him for over 30 years. Uh, we get introduced. We, his father used to teach for us here, actually, uh, Anthony, uh, private, private saxophone. And um, Bob was one of a kind. I played professionally with him for 26 years with the brass quintet. And uh, I'll tell you, the last couple of performances we've done have been really, really very tough. fun of Bob about the number of medleys that he would pick and program for the concerts. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a concert about Bob without having a medley. And the first one that, that popped into my head was Bob's favorite story about how he used to play Tony or how he played Tony in West Side Story when he was in high school. So Bob, if you're watching, this one's for you, West Side Story.
we would get together with, with Bob and, and uh, he'd, he'd start with this the singing and so on. So one day, it was, it was about 4.30, it was myself, Mr. Cantel, and, uh, and Bob, and the phone rings. So I just joking around, I just picked it up, hello, like that. And I kind of almost sang it, hello, and then of course, Crazy Bob comes in, hello, and Crazy Kevin comes, hello. <laughs> and on the other one, I hear, who the heck is this? <laughs> it was the superintendent of school. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give this a try. As you know, Bob was our drummer for uh, 43 years, and the students knew him as Mr. Ferrante. His colleagues knew him as Bob or Bobby. We called him Big Bob, and he was a big part of our Musical 43 years, we traveled all over New England and New York. We actually got up there one time. Bomba ba bomba 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 ba bomba ba bomba dang a dang dang ding a dong ding blue 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 Family Center, also known as Community Connections of Brockton. It's 1367 Main Street on the south side of town, Campello style. Why are we here? There was a special We Are Art event that the Family Center put on inside. We had some young, aspiring artists put on quite a display, and we had a dynamic poet taking the crowd to another level. Let's take a look. traditional soup we make every day, well not every day, but every year on Haitian Independence Day, which is January 1st. 
I like to be in touch with my cultural side, like being, um, I'm Haitian, so I like to stay in touch with that. And I really, I would tell the story, but it's really, really long about why we make it. Basically, we weren't allowed to eat squash um, when we were slaves. So I'm saying us, like as of my ancestors, we weren't allowed to eat squash because it was the color of the white people. So we weren't allowed to do it. So when we finally got, um, when we finally got um, our independence, get our independence, we ate it as a kind of like a ha ha, you know, we won type thing. So I a lot of layers. And it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's layers on top of layers. So it took a really, really long time to make. So I'd say a couple months. Um, my paintings, they focus on what's going on in society, and I try to portray what I think is beautiful or problematic in the society. So I try to use a lot of colors to represent what I'm trying to get across, to show the beauty of different cultures and what I find to be powerful. I would say the one that's my favorite is the woman with the uh, green background because it just shows like the beauty of like women of color and how everyone can look different and that she looks like a very strong and powerful woman. So I think that out of the paintings that I have here today, that one must be my favorite. The one behind me is a painting of Nelson Mandela when he was like a little bit younger and it's him thinking, so it's supposed to symbolize like just a man thinking about like the world around him and trying to make change. And we all know how influential Nelson Mandela was. So the colors in the painting kind of like show that color doesn't really matter. Every, like it's like an explosion of color to show that like, you know, everybody's different. There's varieties and skin tones and that stuff like that shouldn't matter. And like um, Mandela, he, you know, spoke a lot for the like apartheid inequality. So I thought, the multiple colors and then having the black background really makes like a powerful like contrast. So that's really what that piece represents. Ancient beats and rhymes of our Afro mommies and daddies. Moving, moving, moving. Think, 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 think too slow. The thing that makes you want to cry. The thing that makes you want to die. The little boy asks the mother, Mommy, where is our home? The woman replied, Africa is our home, the home of our ancestors, the home of you and me, the home of our Afro mommies and daddies, the dark ones, you know them? They are all the brothers and sisters gathered together shouting, Arambe! Repeat after me, Arambe! 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 So my piece is called Light. Um, I wanted to represent that the African American community can be beautiful without any social standards of what beauty is and it shouldn't be defined and the fact that everybody's different is what makes us beautiful. My name is Eden Slaguerre, and um, these are my artworks. I've been painting since, um, I could say middle school. Seriously painting or like being an artist since middle school. So yeah, I'm 18 now. Each of them took me about like two months to, to make. They took um, a while. The drawing of my sister is basically um, her and her different emotions. She's kind of like bipolar. So I drew, I drew her, and um, I drew her crying, being happy, being sad, and um, she was she was holding a chameleon because um, the chameleon is kind of um, representing the change that she's going through. So yeah, that's why I have her holding the chameleon. Smile, mommy, because you are a queen. Say what? Smile, pop, because you are a king. Say what? Yo, every day is women history. Haitian, Jamaican, Hispanic, and Virgin, yo, so the drama because we here came from Africa. Say what? This is my first painting that I actually did as like a real upcoming artist and um, it took me about like a, like five weeks actually, five weeks because I was still getting used to the whole acrylic paint and everything like that. Um, the whole assignment behind it basically was me, it's, it's a self-portrait and it's me embracing myself as a queen basically. And me um, really taking pride in, how, in, what, in who I am and how I am and how I see myself. I basically modeled it after like Nefertiti kind of. So the whole Nefertiti thing of, of an Egyptian queen, Egyptian queen and she just really feeling like that's the whole jewels part right here and um, I I really don't know. There was no real like, I'm not gonna say there wasn't any technique behind it, but it is my first piece, so this is like a real, this is like how I really started as an artist. I'm honored to be in the show. This is my first show where I'm actually displaying my work. I hope I get more and check me out.
when I look around, look at my people, I see nothing but pride. Say what? It's all right, because to be black is to be proud. Say what? We are on the campus of Brockton High School. Behind me is the Fine Arts Building. And recently, the 50th Anniversary Children's Choir event took place. Brocktonian Amy Corum, many years ago, more than 50 years ago, performed with the Brockton Symphony Orchestra, the Carnival of the Animals, a great rendition. Fast forward to 2016, she did it again. And she teamed up with many special guests, including a couple of middle school bands, to perform some Mary Poppins music, as well as the sweet sound of music. I can't wait to look at the clips. I bet you can't either. <laughs> Let's take a look. Can you hear the lion roar and growl? The lion is the king of beasts and husband of the lioness. Gazelles and things on which he feasts address him as your highness. There are those that admire the roar of his in the African jungles and bells, but I think that wherever the lion is, I'd rather be somewhere else. each other. Have you ever harked to the donkey wild, which scientists call the onager? It sounds like the laugh of a very loud child, or a hepcat playing a harmoniker. But do not sneer at the donkey wild. There is a method in his hee-haw, for with maidenly blush and accent mild, the she-donkey answers, she-haw.
we're back. We're at Enzo Flats again. Man, this place is hot. Recently, local resident Laurie Watson had a family reunion of sorts. Her mother traveled to Africa a number of times and collected some beautiful work. Beautiful, beautiful artwork that I want you to check out right now. Let's take a look. I'm Laurie Watson, and I am a lifelong Brockton resident. <laughs> I'm pretty much, I think, generation number five of my family here. My grandfather graduated in 37 from Brockton High, and that was when the blacks went in the afternoon and the whites went in the morning, so I have pictures of him doing the high jump and running and playing football and all that. But today, it's, it's a long time coming. This is our opening reception for my grandmother's African collection. She was part of um, Bridgewater State's Educators in Africa tour back in the 1970 was the first trip that they did. And she loved art and she loved culture and she loved shopping. <laughs> so she collected some things and she sent them home. My grandfather built shelves and they've been part of our lives my entire life. As a child, I actually played with some of these. This is, granted, I had toys at my grandmother's house, but I wanted to be alone. I'd go down to the living room and I'd play with the xylophone or I'd play with some of the animals. When my grandmother met my grandfather in college, she immediately became Brocktonian. And they came here and she started her teaching career over at the Huntington. But when she became a professor of education at Bridgewater State, she became the first black female professor in the state school system of Massachusetts. And she's always thought that education and culture and knowledge was meant to be shared so that we can all rise. To see this today, I wasn't sure if this was going to happen. My grandfather and I for 20 years have been talking about it needs a show, it needs a show. My name is Dawn Watson. This is my mother's artifacts from when she went to Africa. She went down there with a group called Educators to Africa back in the early 70s. And she started uh, collecting all of these artifacts. Our life has been a story, a very good story, and a very rewarding story that you just can't change and you can't say to yourself, why didn't we do this? Well, we did everything. I am Ian Watson. Uh, Eugenia was my grandmother, a wonderful woman. The turnout is amazing. I think she'd be very proud to see that all these things she's collected over the years are being shared with everybody. I remember growing up around all this my entire life. It's a very, very happy moment in the family. These pictures are actually pictures that my grandmother took while she was there. We are, we've all loved her collection and it's one of those things that was uniquely her. When I got into Enso Flats, it just seemed like everything was coming together. My grandfather agreed to let me take it from the house and the artist board and Trinity management has just been there for anything I've needed. So this is amazing and to see people just waltzing in here, I was kind of afraid if I was going to have everything done, but I know that when you're doing something that should happen, things fall into place. The art and music scene in Brockton continues to flourish. What an outstanding episode. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed covering these fantastic events. To learn more about Brockton Community Access, please visit our website at bcatv.org. You can also check out our YouTube page, youtube.com backslash, love that. The Brockton Channel is all one word. For everyone in One North Maine, I'm Jay Miller, and we will see you around town.